Now look, I had to change it because I had Hagrid, but, you know, Harry Potter, but I can't really love anything with Harry Potter right now. Thanks, J.K. Rowling. So we're going to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender instead. Hey everyone, I'm T.M. Sparrow, writer and homeschooling mom, and today I'm going to tell you all about the father figures in fiction that I love and the ones I love to hate. Since it's Father's Day, I thought what better time to talk about father figures in fiction. Like any characters, dads, stepdads, and surrogate dads fall across the board in likability and personality. So today I want to tell you all about the father figures I love and the father figures I love to hate. Just like my favorite female characters list, I am only allowing myself to add one character per series to this list. So I'll start with the father figures that I love the most. These are the men that I think are the best dads. Some are wise, some are caring, and some are just plain awesome. Number one, Zebolt Adelbert Schmeider from the Mercy Thompson series. First up is a man from one of my all-time favorite series. Zebolt Adelbert Schmeider or Z, as he's more commonly called, is a grumpy fey mechanic. Now, we're not really sure what kind of fey he is, because he calls himself a gremlin, but as Mercy herself points out, gremlin's a term that wasn't invented until the 1940s, and Z's a lot older than that. Z has a half-human son named Tad, whom he loves in the same grumpy, protective way that he loves Mercy. Mercy and Z may not be related by blood, but once she started working for him at the garage, they became as close as father and daughter. I almost put Bran Cornick here, because after all, of the two, he's the one who won the argument over which father figure was going to walk Mercy down the aisle. And he's been in her life since she was a baby. However, Bran is not in a position where he can always be the father figure that Mercy needs. Z is the one who's there for her the most. And Z is the one who sold her the garage that she loves so much. So, Z is the one who makes this list. Number two, Uncle Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender. I think it's pretty universally agreed that Uncle Iroh is like the best ever in any competition. Hands down, Uncle Iroh is the kindest and wisest and just best mentor that anybody could have, really. Uncle Iroh was more of a father to Zuko than his own father was, and it's pretty safe to say that Zuko would not have had the redemptive character arc that he had if it weren't for Uncle Iroh. So, hands down, Uncle Iroh is 100% the best dad on this list. Number three, Jean Valjean from Les Miserables. Before you think I'm a classical literature snob, I have a confession. I have never read Les Mis all the way through. I have tried so many times, but there's like a three-page description of a chair that has no relation to the plot whatsoever, and I just couldn't do it. So, when I talk about Jean Valjean, I'm talking about the musical Les Mis. Because, yes, I am a musical theater person. So let's talk about why Prisoner 24601 makes this list. Jean Valjean is not a perfect man. That's one of the great things about him as a character. He went to jail for stealing bread to feed his family, and then after struggling with life as a parolee, he turns to thievery again, 
only to have his life changed by the kindness of the priest he was trying to steal from. So he tries to turn his life around and do good, but he still makes mistakes. Because he blames himself for what happened to Fantine and her resulting death, he goes and rescues her child from the abusive family who had been caring for her and ends up raising her as his own. This is the man who risked his life to save the man that Cosette loved, who chose not to kill the officer who had been hounding him pretty much his whole life, and in the end left and went into hiding on his own so that Cosette and Marius could live their life together in happiness without always having to worry about being on the run from the law because of him. And those are just a few of the many reasons that Jean Valjean is on this list. Number four, Jonathan Kent from Superman. Okay, I'm letting my nerd flag fly here, but Jonathan Kent is one of the best comic book dads there is. He raised Clark knowing he was from an alien planet, right? And we know that couldn't have been easy with all of Clark's abilities. Even so, he never tried to profit from what his son could do, and he never turned him over to the government or scientists or anything like that, even though he could have, and probably made a lot of money. Instead, he raised Clark to be a good man, maybe too good depending on who you ask, and to use his powers for good. Superman just wouldn't be the big blue boy scout he is without Jonathan Kent's influence. Number five, Mufasa from The Lion King. Okay, so we've had a fae, a firebender, a Frenchman, and a Kansas farmer. So let's just add a lion to the list. Mufasa is undeniably one of the best dads ever. He was wise and caring. He was always there for Simba and did his best to raise him to be a wise and just king. I mean, I used to see billboards around here encouraging dads to be active and engaged fathers, and they used Mufasa on those billboards. Okay, now we're on to the worst dads ever. And man, these guys are some terrible fathers. But... They are some pretty awesome characters. Number one, Vrantis from the Savior series. Yes, I know. I talk about the Savior's Champion a lot. But it's my channel, and it's one of my favorite books, so yeah. Plus, I really can't talk about dads that I love to hate without mentioning King Disaster Dad himself. Honestly, Vrantis is pretty horrible. I mean, he killed his child's mom and has every intention of assassinating his own daughter. And all for power and glory. Yikes. I mean, the guy may be a villain, but he's a well-written one at least. His actions are vile and unforgivable, but he's clever and a real threat. Brontes is a great villain and a terrible father, and that's why he's on this list. Number two, Darth Vader from Star Wars. Continuing with terrible dads, Anakin Skywalker is definitely one of the worst. Like Brontes, he also tried to kill the mother of his children while she was pregnant. Which was kind of ridiculous, considering that part of his motivation for turning to the dark side was to try and protect Padme from dying. Terrible writing aside, Anakin was a terrible father even in the good movies. He didn't even know his own children, and even when he did realize who they were, he still tried to kill them on multiple occasions. His one good act does not make up for all the bad he did, or the fact that he's the reason Luke only has one hand. Number three, Shakespeare's King Lear. So I read King Lear when I was in elementary school. 
I couldn't really tell you if I really understood the whole concept of it, but it does mark the beginning of my love of Shakespeare, and King Lear is still one of my favorite plays. Side note, if you haven't seen the Amazon Prime miniseries with Anthony Hopkins, you are missing out. King Lear is a terrible dad. I mean, what kind of father? and what kind of king decides to divide up his kingdom by determining which daughter loves him the most, and then disinheriting his favorite child because she is honest and refuses to participate in a competition of flattery. It is so messed up on so many levels. I mean, the fact that he even had a favorite child to begin with is bad enough, but to disinherit her because she refuses to flatter you? No wonder everything in his kingdom and his life went to hell in a handbasket after that. Number four, Harry Wormwood from Matilda. I saw the movie with Danny DeVito long before I ever realized that there was a book. But I did recently read the book to my daughter, so I can honestly say that Harry Wormwood is pretty terrible in either medium. He ignores and belittles his daughter while favoring his son. He's a shady used car salesman who cheats his customers and gets in trouble with the law. And he even forgets how old Matilda is and refuses to let her go to school because he doesn't believe she's old enough. All of this on top of both parents leaving Matilda home alone from a very young age. Harry does do one thing right at least by letting Miss Honey adopt Matilda when he flees the country with his family to avoid the law. Number five, Zeus from Greek mythology. Mighty Zeus, king of the gods of Olympus, and arguably mythology's worst dad ever. Zeus had a lot of children with a lot of different women. Let's be real, he probably had more demigod children than any other deity. He wasn't really what you would call a hands-on dad. In fact, really, he just impregnated women and then went back to Olympus to ignore his half-blood children. And he never stepped in when Hera harassed them either. Honestly, you could write a whole essay on Zeus and Hera and the cultural significance of their roles in mythology, but that's not what this video is about. Suffice it to say that Zeus was a terrible guy and a deadbeat dad. Also, he swallowed his lover Metis because it was prophesied that her children, by him, would be more powerful than him. The first would be a daughter, and the second would be a son who would overthrow him. So he tricked her into turning into a fly, and then swallowed her. But she was already pregnant, which is how we get the incredibly weird myth of Athena springing from his head already fully grown. Because mythology is weird. Anyway, I guess you can't really expect much from Zeus considering his own dad swallowed all of his children, so yeah. Okay, that's all I have for you today. But before I go, I do want to wish a very happy Father's Day to all of the great dads out there, including my own dad and my husband, who is a wonderful father to our daughter. So, I hope you enjoyed this list of great and terrible dads, and you can let me know in the comments below what fictional dads you love or love to hate. Or, as always, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And if you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos on Sundays. See you next time! As a tongue twister. Father figures in fiction, father figures in fiction, father figures in fiction, father figures in fiction. <gasps> and personality. Bleh. It's Father's Day, so no. Bleh. It's Father's Day, no. 
It's Father's... No. My God. <laughs> uh, bleh. Since it's Father's Day, I thought, what better time to talk about father figures in fiction? Like any characters... the. So today, I want to tell... No. Bleh. So I'll start with the dads... No. Bleh. So I'll start with the dads that... Not the dads. Jesus. <sighs> Number one. Z... Stupid chair. Zebold Adelbert Schneider, or Z as he's more commonly called, is a grumpy... Because it's my list and I do what I want. Uncle Iroh had... Bleh. He raised Clark knowing he was from an alien planet and he... Bleh. Terrible writing aside, Anakin was... Bleh. Honestly, you could write a whole essay on Zeus and Hera and their interact... Bleh. Bleh. Suffice it to stay, to stay, bleh, which is how we have the myth of Athena springing fully formed from her head, his head, his head, not her head, or you, bleh. 